forgotten time, in a place famous for its idealism, there lived a girl who loved with such guileless expectation that the word forever had meaning. She lived with an open heart, untainted by the need to protect itself, and saw no reason why a girl couldn't wear a magnificent dress every day to celebrate such emotional bounty. But that was way before she became Philippa Finch, a time when she went by another name, a name that matched the joyous promises of love. And way, way before she took the journey to road test her ideal. This story is that journey. You know you're half dead when you hear an aria from Madame Butterfly and you don't respond. When you look down and see that your clothes are color-coded gray, brown, and blue, then you know that you are half dead. You are half dead when you banish all your pets outside. You will know for sure that you are half dead when you throw your heart out of a hotel window and watch the cars below run over it for hours and hours. When you let your hair go or just keep cutting it in a series of unfortunate ways, then it will be obvious. But the telltale sign of being half dead is when you become thin with disappointment. Philippa Finch had successfully passed all the signposts of someone who was considered almost dead. So naturally, she began to wonder what would happen next. Would the sun shine for her again? Or was the weather going to be for her permanently Melbourne? That girl there is Philippa Finch. Or at least it was her, only now she's dead. Not dead dead, but sort of like numb, torpid, stupefied, quite despair. Under normal circumstances, she would have liked to write out those words in her favorite font, which is a combination of elephant and chili. But when you're dead, you just don't have that kind of energy. What happened was that she just woke up one morning and couldn't go on with pretending anymore living the lie. Hi, how are you? Great, great. And you? Marvelous. No, no, terrific. That lie. While inside she was feeling far and terrific. Very far. And all she could feel was the accumulation of life's tricky moments encroach on her inner feng shui. Fortunately, she discovered that at those moments, benevolent beings from another sphere take you away to a place for people weighed down by the consequences of caring too much. It is a place far out of town and high on a hill. It looks like this. That's right. About 440 kilometers from her personal history and very far from the most recent disappointment. Now that she was here, she could begin to face how she had died. How did she die? Well, a girl can't face that kind of thing without an Earl Grey tea. So she had better put on the kettle and just accept that all this place had was a takeaway cup. Luckily, encouragement arrived in the form of a grass wren who suggested she look to her past in order to move forward. So into her emotional history she went. Philippa arrived in a new town with her mother, father, and her pet chicken. She met her favorite person in the whole world there, Fragile Boy. And even though things in her world had changed a lot, actually quite a lot, it didn't matter how bad things were. Fragile Boy and all the joy they shared was always there for her. That is until the very sad day when Philippa moved away with her mother. That wasn't just a sad day. It was a super sad day for Philippa. That was the first day Philippa took out her heart and hid it away.
Philippa was stumbling through life with a broken heart. Then the door of love opened once more for her. And on the day she met Journeyman, she was sure that three suns had exploded in her heart. And a gorgeous feeling seized her that looked very similar to the shape and hue of love. But a gorgeous friend interceded and pointed out the ramifications of falling in love with someone who had taken flight from his previous lover in the manner of Journeyman. Looking for a way out of that particular relationship, Journeyman had seized an opportunity one morning as they sat over breakfast to go and get the milk. He never came back. But so big were Philippa's feelings for Journeyman, she decided to overlook his capacity for firebombing her greatest aspirations for love and curled up with him in a ball of oblivion, reassured by the promise of his love until the inevitable puncture. And the root cause of that puncture was his predilection for collecting other hearts besides Philippa's. At first, Philippa heeded the advice of a veteran of disappointment and pressed on. Until he eventually captured the heart of Philippa's most beloved best friend. Could it really be true? Apparently, yes. And off to New York they went, leaving Philippa alone to replace her silence with the word incredulous and to stare at all the broken pieces of her once pure heart. Thankfully, a compassionate stranger who had sensed her plight popped by with a substitute heart, which is just as well, because life can be tricky without a heart. <laughs> 